There was a case we handled in Makodi here not too long ago. The young man who was a student of University of Agriculture at the time was told by a friend of his that there was a grandmaster, a spiritual maharaji, a guru, a guru that appears at the bank of River Benway on Wednesday evenings. That if he wants riches, if he wants wealth, if he wants affluence, he should stop going to school and come court covenant with the guru. The guru will give him a few conditions to follow. And if he has the courage to follow through on the conditions, he will be absorbed into the brotherhood. And the moment he is accepted in the brotherhood, he will take the oath of life. And the moment he takes the oath of life, the treasure houses of Satan will be open to him. The only thing he cannot guarantee is how long he will live, but he will have sufficient finances, sufficient influence, sufficient wealth. And the young man seemed to be interested in the possibility of wealth. He came to River Benway. At the time stipulated, met other people there, other people that they have told the good news of wealth and they were interested in the deal and before they knew it, the guru, the mahanta, the maharaj, he, had, he appeared in their midst so suddenly. And I'm not telling you stories. I was part of the young man's deliverance. So just hold on. Are you still with me? So these are practical life situations that happen, not in San Francisco, but in Makodi. And when the young man appeared, there were other young men that were hopeful that the treasure house of wealth would be open to them. And in all that spiritual ceremony that was set up, what Satan was trying to achieve was to get them to take an oath. As human beings, you are likely to say, well, is it not just an oath? I can come out of the place and reverse it. So they came to the place. The guru came with a bag and he asked them to pick items at random from the bag. Because the first requirement is that you must break one of the Ten Commandments. So in that bag are written on the pieces of paper one among the Ten Commandments. So you pick at random. And the one you pick will be the one you are going to violate. So when the young man picked, he opened the piece of paper. What came out was adultery. That he will have to commit adultery in the next 14 days in order for him to find favor with the siren who is the spirit behind the altar. The young man said, that's, that's a small thing. He will look for how to manage the expectation. The Mahanta now told him, it's not adultery with anybody, it's adultery with your mother. And I'm not making it up. And they told him that if in 14 days time, you are not able to sleep with your mother. One of two things will happen to you. It's either you run mad or you die. So the young man left the place. And the body that he left with was more than the body he had before he attempted to join the fraternity. Please help me preach to your neighbor, Satan. is a businessman. Satan will give you a burden that, that is heavier than the burden you are carrying now. You might think that the burden that you are carrying now is too heavy. 
So you need help. If Satan helps you, he will give you a burden that is heavier than what you are carrying. And you will wish that all you had was the former burden that was upon your life. Hallelujah. The young man left the location, went back home, saw the mother sleeping, and he sneaked. He came close. His heart could not take it. That was the first day. His friend came to visit him early in the morning and said, you have 13 days to go. He woke up in the night. He tiptoed. He came again. Got close. Aye! His heart could not take it. And that was how he was coming close. And he did not have the courage to perform. On the 13th day, he called his mother. Uh, because of confidentiality, I don't want to mention names. The people I'm talking about are still alive in this town. Are you still with me? Called the mother. Told the mother that I joined something. The mother said, you joined what? She said, I joined what? Something. You know, when you want to talk about those stories, you can't call it by the name. You say something. And the something that I joined, they told me there that I have to sleep with you. And for the last 13 days, I've been attempting, but my heart could not carry it. And they told me that if I don't succeed, it's either I will drop dead or I will run mad. So he told the mother that if I drop dead, then my blood is not in your hands. It's my mistake that is responsible for my death. But if I run mad, it means I have hope. Go and look for a strong man of God to deliver me from madness. That was a great errand that were, he was giving his mother. At 7 o'clock exactly on the 14th day, this young man ran mad. The young man that I speak of was taken to the psychiatric hospital opposite government college. Government college. How many of you know government college? Do you know that psychiatric hospital there? That was where the young man was taken. The family came to visit me on Christmas day in my house. Those days I used to stay in Wadata. You know when the Bible says that the gospel shall be preached from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the uttermost part of the earth. My house was in one of the uttermost part of the earth in this city. The only reason why we were not robbed in that location was because we did night vigil every night. Thieves came to the surrounding buildings and boggled them and tamed all the neighbors. But they had, they left our building because we were saying, Hey, Keko, hey, Keko, I come. Korea, CK, Mahatan. <laughs> we were doing night vigil every night so the armed robbers avoided our building. And the way we were speaking the tongues as if we wanted to devour, wanted to take something. I take up. Ah, that was our security. Those were the days that I married my beautiful wife. And I married her into that jungle. Taught her, gave her the injection of how to speak in tongues in the night. <laughs> that was the first wedding gift. Injection for tongues. Because tongues was our security against physical, physical enemies and spiritual enemies. It was a good place to be. It was in that my jungle that this family came to visit me. And they said, where is Pastor Tena? Tena. Tena was the one that directed that family to my house. So when they came, they told me that they are coming from Tena. And Tena is my friend. I said, what's the problem? On Christmas Day, I was wearing for the first time the white suit I wore on my wedding. I wore it that day. 
Oh, oh. I was still in that white suit when they came, to, knocked my door and asked if the pastor was around. I said, what are you looking for? I'm on leave. I'm no longer preaching. I want to spend time with my young wife and my household. They say, stay now that sent them. I said, okay. What's the problem? They say, their son is mad. I said, God, what's my business? They say, stay now, stay now, stay now. So I drove with them. We went to the psychiatric ward. I asked, what is his name? They told me. Came into the ward. Is this one your own? They said, no. I saw somebody with his leg off like this. You, 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 I know you don't believe me. The demon stabilized him. He was there. He was just there. I saw strange things in the world. I said, no, this one is not our own. Our own is down there. We moved there. And when I went, I called the name of the young man. I said, I called his name. I don't want to call his name on the platform here. When I called his name, he answered me. Then I began deliverance. When I began the deliverance, there was manifestation in the entire world. The Nazis, guess who the Nazis cast out? They did not cast out the devils, the demons. It was me. They both, I, was, I was arrested in the, in the world and casted out. And they threatened me never to come back. Again. So I told the family, like, if they were interested in the deliverance, they should discharge the young man and bring him to the prayer tent. I told them this by 12 noon. They were able to achieve the discharge by 4 p.m., and by 5 o'clock, I came to the prayer tent. The young man was saying so many things. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, oh. Where's Matthew? I called Matthew. I said, come, let's go and let's do practical. We'll be preaching for a long time. So Matthew, he followed me at the back. Instead of him to move, he was at the back. <laughs> we went there. I laid my hands. As I was approaching the guy, I was, I was asking, Holy Ghost, what will I do? Holy Ghost, what will I do? Then I felt the presence of the angel that walks with me on my right hand. Then I stretched that hand, I put it upon his head, and I began to speak in tongues. Thirteen minutes, he slept in my hand. Meanwhile, he has not slept for, I don't know for how many days. I put his head down. I told the parents, go and buy Lucozade energy boosters. When he sleeps and wakes up, give him food and give him Glucose. 13 minutes of prayer healed the madness. He woke up from the sleep and when he woke up from the sleep they gave him food gave him drink then he slept again woke up by 12 midnight they gave him food, gave him drink. He didn't feel like sleeping. So Matthew led him to Christ. Prayed for him. He got filled with the Holy Ghost. Then we started training him on how to do night vigil. Because when he came into his right mind, he noticed he'd been pooing and pee peeing on his body. We went and changed him. Then we started teaching him how to survive. We took him for night vigil for three nights. I told him the demons will come back. When they come back, do this thing. This thing that we do. So we tested him. And we knew that he could do night vigil by himself. That was how we discharged him. He went back to Union Greek and graduated. Now all of this. Yes. yes. You were? I, I, I believe you are clapping for Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Now listen. It was a transaction that gave Satan the authority to plunder that life like that. It was just, it was just an oath he took. And the moment he took that oath, unknown to him, he had sold his soul to Satan. That's the kind of thing Satan does when people are initiated into witchcraft. It's just a little oath. That I'm willing to walk the path of wickedness. I'm willing to explore darkness. 
I'm willing to open up my soul for demonic intervention and education. Then they seal the oath with a little blood covenant to validate it as a signature. From that day, the person will begin to see spirits come take his or her spirit in the night to the places where they do meetings for capacity building. Because you have exercised your soul in a trade. It is Satan's commercial activity to trade in human souls. The question I need to ask you quickly, because I said I will not preach for long, is what, what have you sworn to? What have you agreed to work with? What have you decided to travel with? What, what, who have you given authority to take advantage of the powers of your soul? So an oath, a covenant, is one of the means of transaction on the threshing floor of the soul. 